Hi, everybody. Welcome to Breakfast All Day. Matt, Christy, Alonzo. It is Friday, April 17th. And uh, before Friday. we get rolling on our, yeah, like it matters. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait to go out tonight. Thank God it's Friday. Uh, I want to Friday. roll our boogie. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> Uh, which is all the criteria you've done right now. Uh, anyway, so it, it's the day that we get together to record, and we always like to look back at the week in Corona. Uh, what's happening? How is the pandemic uh, continuing to affect the world of show business? And as always, Chrissy has a list. I do. Um, I have a big list. We've, we actually have breaking news this morning. I want to start out really fast, though, by just thanking all of you guys who were nice enough to respond yeah. to Matt's call to send us the marquees from the theaters in your hometowns. It's been so cool to see. I mean, it's sad to see, but cool to see yeah. that, you know, we are all in this and we all have this feeling of longing no matter where we are in the country. So um, from everywhere from, you know, a giant art house theater in New York to small town. So Matt has, um, yeah, I, you listening, you can, we'll describe it to you, but Matt got a bunch of pictures we can show you guys. Yeah, so we got some pictures in, we, as, as Christy mentioned last week, we asked you to, you know, send us pictures of your local theaters on Twitter if they have something clever on the marquee. Um, don't go out and be unsafe, but should you be for some reason out in the car and it's safe to stop and take the picture and it'll be okay, um, We'll show these because we've been running them at the beginning of our clips. So uh, I'm going to share my screen. Um, when I look back at this clip, if it doesn't look right, then I'll end up editing it in. But this way, at least, <laughs> Make it work. Uh, Christy and Alonzo. Yes. Can see. So here is our first image. That's the IFC Center in New York. That's the West 4th Street subway stop right there underneath it. And they have many, many cool events there all the time. It says, we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, catch up with IFC Films Unlimited at ifcfu.com. That's an unfortunate so. URL. And yeah, they, they, they might have thought about that one. Uh, but I yeah, they're doing foo. I, I'm just saying, <laughs> IFCFU, yeah. that is like, a hey, theater. How dare you, IFC? <laughs> uh, and also, they are offering a 30 day free trial. They're not an advertiser thing. I'm just throwing that out there if uh, folks want to enjoy some indies at home. What else so we thank got? You, uh, thank so you, Daniel, for sent Daniel yeah, sent that to us. Yeah, videos. Daniel Sibner from New York. So thank you, Daniel. Uh, next one is Dylan uh, from Boise. Uh, this is the Flix Theater uh, in Boise, Idaho. It just says, stay safe, see you soon. There's another one from Flix coming up, but that's a, a chain kind of in the north part of the country uh, mm -hmm. and also in Canada. Oh. So, um, yeah, stay safe. See you soon. Uh, we'll see how long soon is, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All next? right. Uh, this one wasn't sent to us specifically, but it was posted <laughs> on Twitter that somebody called out that Leah Thompson put this one up. Uh, Did she? No. That, that Leah well, Thompson? She, that Leah Thompson posted this picture. I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure she didn't take the picture. Gotcha. She just tweeted the picture. Very uh, cute. Right? Uh, shall I, I'll do it in the voice. <laughs> The marquee says, Marty, you must not leave the house. Anything you do could have serious repercussions on future events. <laughs> Very cute. Where is this theater? Do we know? I could not tell you, but I bet okay. one of our uh, listeners knows. It's very cute. Very cute Back to the Future reference. Yes. Good. All right. So next up, um, this is from Reg Martin, uh, Princess Twin in Waterloo, Ontario. Cool. Uh, temporarily closed due to COVID-19. We'll be back. Stay healthy. KW. Yes, very good. I don't I'm know sure. if that's KW is signing it or if they're only wishing <laughs> I mean, it's better than New York's FU. This is true. <laughs> right? The Canadian's always so polite. Yes. Uh, all right. So um, Sandra Lewis White sent us a couple of pictures. Uh, this one is the Dunbar Theater in Vancouver. Uh, Very cool. It says, we are open for popcorn, walk-in or drive-through, Uber Eats, and coffee. So they are repurposing their movie theater snacks during this time. Yeah. Um, so I, I know I, there's a really cool story in the Wall Street Journal about how, not cool, but sad, that minor league ballparks are also trying to find use oh. for their space. And some of them are like offering ballpark snacks you know, for people who need food. So oh, yes. they're doing that at this theater as well in Vancouver, it looks like. Yeah, I think the arena in Los Angeles is also set up where you can swing by and pick up popcorn if you want. Mm -hmm. What is next? All right, so Sandra sent us another picture. Uh, this is the Park Theater, also in Vancouver. Um, and stay home, eat popcorn, order on Uber, and Skip. Skip is a Canadian-based uh, 
company called Skip the Dishes, and they okay. deliver food. Ah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, last one, Sean <laughs> Blanford from Minneapolis. I, I assure you, we are not open. And if you guys don't know the Uptown Theater in Minneapolis, I have never been to Minneapolis. I've never even been to Minnesota. But this theater is really famous because they have the funniest marquees. Whoever does their marquees is so smart and so clever. So like when they showed Emma before everything shut down, they posted something like, Emma, based on the 1990 film, Clueless or whatever. <laughs> so they'll, they'll, they'll have really clever, funny, like, wordplay. So the Uptown Theater says, I assure you, we are not open. And uh, that is a bummer, and hopefully they will be again soon. So there that was... is really cool of all you guys to send these pictures to us. That's really uh, Back when Spy Magazine used to do their true facts section that was headlines, silly headlines, like when um, they were doing that on The Tonight Show, there were a bunch of excellent movie marquees that was like, Batman, Juice. Or uh, the other, the best, the be one of the best one was uh, 100 Mild Dalmatians Dying Young. Oh, uh, the other <laughs> one was, oh I see. The weird, weird ones that are stacked strangely. I right. See. And then it was The Fly, Gods Must Be Crazy, Aliens. <laughs> That's true. The fly Gods Must Be Crazy, Aliens. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so if you guys have a, a cool marquee or whatever it says in your town, we'd love to see what is a... Uh, is happening. With yeah, so thanks leaders. for sending those in. And if you have more of those that are fun, uh, by all means, send them in and we'll, uh, we'll do a little show and tell. We'd love yeah. it. Okay, so we have news for you. The big news, we have breaking news today, and that is that Comic-Con was canceled. Now, this had to happen. Sure. Uh, we've been talking here about, like, when are they going to do this? Like, clearly it has to happen. In the is not pleased. It's sad. In the 51-year <laughs> history of Comic-Con, they've never had a reason to shut it down, and, and now they do, but like, does anybody want to get crammed into Hall H oh, in a yeah. costume? No, nowhere is there less personal space on Earth than at <laughs> Comic-Con. <laughs> also, you know, and, also there, there's a, like you get with any large event, but there is a fairly large contingent of people that say have a casual relationship with personal hygiene. <laughs> that, that's yeah. an annual thing anyway, but yeah. It gets it, warm and close. But it's, it's a bummer, you know, the way that South by Southwest's cancellation really hit Austin. Yeah. This no, will hurt for, San Diego. Absolutely. You know? The hotels, the, the service people. Um, you know, there's a lot of, I'm sure there are a lot of indie vendors who, like, this is a major part of their year as far as, like, being able to sell, you know, zines or toys or, you know, T-shirts or whatever it is they do. And uh, I'm sure we're probably going to see a lot of those folks kind of doing some sort of virtual artist alley or whatever, where it's like, we would, here's what we would have sold at Con. Please buy it on the internet. Uh, the, and know, hopefully that's folks be, will do that. Yeah, I think that that's going to definitely, um, you know, be a hit for a lot of the artists because, you know, I've seen some news that, the other thing that's happening is comic book shops are struggling, which makes me think that, you know, probably the publishers are pulling back a little bit as well. And the artists make a decent amount of money at the various artist alleys. That's always been Absolutely, one of the pushbacks yeah. about putting Comic-Con in Las Vegas is that um, one of the, and, and I've heard this from some of the artists that I've talked to when WonderCon is in Anaheim, they see less money from the people from the, um, public that are going there because they're spending a lot of their disposable money at Disneyland and they're all afraid of Vegas because it would be that times 10. It would just go to the craps table. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I know that would work for me. <laughs> the comics, the comic shops are having their own issues because I think Diamond Distributor basically just like closed down. Or... I think there are not new comic books being put out because I know that on April 1st, the new Miles Morales was supposed to come out. I yeah. called our local shop here in Manhattan Beach, the comic bug. And they're closed, but they happen to be open that day because they were they were cleaning. And I said, um, "Hey, I'm I'm looking for the, for a, a comic book. I'm happy to see you guys are open." And they said, "What is it?" I said, "It's the new Miles Morales." So they're like, "Oh, we don't have anything new. Like if you're looking for something older, we have that." But yeah, like, and there, there's no new publication. I, I I think there are some smaller uh, publishing houses that are working out stuff with with stores to get their things there. But anything that goes through Diamond, which is like DC, Marvel, any of the sort of the big stuff. Yeah, that's just not been accessible. Well, and so the other part of that, though, is I've noticed because rather than have, like, I'm getting the Star Wars comics via the Comixology app, and mm -hmm. those aren't coming, and those are Marvel. So I think Marvel and DC is doing minimal runs, even digitally, for wow. their 
because they still bad. need diamond in the stores to still be packing that stuff. Right. So hopefully those folks will all find a way to get their work out for the world. The other big thing that, that happened today was that Taylor Swift canceled her entire 2020 tour. She's hoping to do it now in 2021, but one of the main stops was here in Los Angeles on July 25th and 26th. It was going to open the new SoFi Stadium in Inglewood where the Rams and Chargers were gonna play. This is gonna right. be the big opening event for that stadium. And clearly we're not gonna be in any kind of position in July to have the Taylor Swift concert, so. Yeah, both, both the mayor and the governor in recent weeks have been very clear about like, we're probably not looking at concerts in Southern California again until 2021 at the earliest. Uh, and so, <laughs> For those of you listening, you're missing <laughs> Christie's amazing disappearing Pellegrino bottle. Oh, thanks for green. It's green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so fun! I didn't even think about that when I picked it today. Anyway, so yeah, so so there's anyway, so, so a lot of uh, of anything that, that 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 smacks of a public gathering that was supposed to happen this summer in 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 LA is probably not. I'm I'm hearing rumblings about certain things that were supposed to be happening in July that are like either being, you know push back to a, a date later in the year or indefinitely or trying to figure out, you know, what else to do with it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting that my favorite convention of the year, uh, which is in August, Tiki Oasis in San Diego <laughs> is also going to be canceled. Um, yeah, right. sadly. Um, so speaking of canceled, it can was supposed to happen in May. They tried to push it to late June, early July. And now they're saying that's not going to happen then yeah. either, right? So yeah. I mean, uh, again, that they were kind of in denial. It seemed about the severity of the situation. Sure. They, they were still kind of hoping something might be able to happen, but but no. But then there's some good news today too, which is that the new Fiona Apple album is out. It came out early. Um, my entire Twitter feed is how amazing the new Fiona Apple <laughs> album is. It's called Fetch the Bolt Cutters. It's uh, I've not heard it yet, but it's her first album in eight years, so. If you are a fan, it's out there. It's supposed to be great. Um, what else do we have? Things also being canceled. The Tour de France was supposed to have mm -hmm. been June 27th. This is the first time it's been canceled since 1946. Wow. Um, there are some movies that have gotten moved, like the big Pixar movie this summer, Soul, their musical Soul, was supposed to come out on June 19th. Now they're pushing it to November 20th. SpongeBob is now August 7th. Infinite was supposed to have been August 7th, but is now next May, May 28th. Are they still holding Mulan for July? Like they think that's going to happen? I have not heard a change in the Mulan date. Right. But I mean, that all seems the, like that's going to have to get pushed that, as yeah, well. That all that Marvel nice. stuff got pushed back, but. Yes. Um, American Idol is doing an all-at-home edition. Have you guys seen this? No. So maybe you were going to Hollywood, but now you got to go back home to your small town in Kentucky or wherever you're from. And everyone, find was, some doing, wifi. everyone was doing it remotely. So all this, the top 20, they're all going to sing their songs remotely. The judges are going to judge remotely. I guess Ryan Seacrest will be in his palatial compound, wherever mm. that is, hosting. Um, so that is an interesting thing. Alonzo, you'll like this one. Sprinkles is doing design your own cupcake kits to go and they are delivering them. Sprinkles cupcakes here in the Grove, two different size boxes. One is 25 bucks, one is 60 bucks. Yes. They give you the cupcakes and they give you like the, the frosting and the decorations and, separately. And, yes. And they have those around the country. Like it's not just an LA thing. Yeah. yeah I don't, yes. No. I don't know if this is happening in the rest of the country, but can we point out that in the last couple of weeks, uh, LA at least has uh, changed the rule in that if you get takeout, you can get booze takeout as well. Oh, I, that's been for a while now. Uh, no, I know, yeah. but I don't think we, I, I, you know, as someone who. Uh, <laughs> Let's no, talk about it then. Let's just dwell on this for um, a second. You know, I, I am a staggering distance from the Tonga Hut. Um, so I can now call them up and, and say, I work my way through the Grog Log, uh, <laughs> all 97 <laughs> drinks in one year. Um, yeah, my next do you, door neighbor. Do you have the a other... mug there? <laughs> oh, you... Not yet. Oh, okay. My no, next door neighbor the, the other here. day. Yeah, the other day. Was, <laughs> my next door neighbor the other day. My next door neighbor was um, going to get tacos at this place at the top of the hill and get margaritas to go. I think a lot of places are going to make some of their money back by doing beer and wine to go. Yeah, so... like Fresh, Fresh Brothers Pizza will now deliver you beer and wine, which they. 
I go cups. Loud do. Good eats. Good eats is doing like beer and wine to go. That's yeah. sad. Um, George Stephanopoulos yes. tested positive. His wife Allie Wentworth tested positive two weeks ago. He took the test. He also has it, so he's been doing stuff from home. Uh, um, Nancy Nancy Silverton had tested positive, uh, but now is clear. The woman behind uh, Pizzeria Mozza yes, and, and La Brea Spock, Bakery. And Key Spaca and yeah. Yes, yeah, this, is, this is a restaurateur, a very famous restaurateur in Los Angeles here. Um, if you were hoping to travel up to the Antelope Valley, or even if you live far away and want to see the poppy fields in bloom, there's a live stream of it. So you can, from wherever the country, wherever you are, wherever the world, um, we've had so much rain, like nearly twice as much rain in that part of Southern California. So it's really incredibly vibrant. So you can enjoy the beauty of the poppies without seeing people or having to deal with allergies. Um, uh, did, we, did we talk about Burning Man getting canceled? Oh, no, we've not. But that makes sense we too. That, I, I don't, I just, I've never been. I want to see what the virtual version will be like. <laughs> have you guys ever been to Burning Man? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Neither have I. But I'm, I'm always amazed at like, seemingly straight normal people for whom this is like an annual pilgrimage. Oh yeah, like, this like, is really? a free flag, yeah. You? Okay. <laughs> um, what else is of note? Lionsgate has begun kind of a cool series called Lionsgate Live. Every Friday, they're going to stream a movie online. It is a fundraiser for um, one of the frontline healthcare people. Tonight is The Hunger Games. Next Friday is Dirty Dancing, Matt, your new Ooh. favorite film. Uh, I've seen it. <laughs> yes. May, <laughs> May 1st is La La Land, and May 8th is John Wick. Okay. Um, Valley Girl is now available streaming for the first time ever. It was never the, available digitally. And the remake is finally coming out on May 8th streaming. Yes, we'll the trailer for that. We'll have to review that. That trailer we just will. dropped this week. Yeah, we that's will. been on the shelf since like 2018, apparently. But uh, I, I, I kind of know the writer. She's from Dallas, and I screened one of her early films uh, back when I was running the USA Film Festival. What's so. her name? Uh, Amy Talkington. Uh, I she think it is. she also works on uh, what's the Hulu show that we haven't been watching with Reese Witherspoon? <laughs> Little fires everywhere. Little fires everywhere. Yeah, she's. I she, think we meant to get to that at some point. Yeah, maybe we will. She keeps very busy. Anyway, so she wrote this Valley Girl remake, and now it's finally coming out. So cute. Um, JB Smoove has a variety show. A weekly well, variety show called You Are Here. And he's got a drummer, this guy named Frufu, who's kind of a badass. And, uh, and he, it's just like a, like a regular talk show. He has a variety show from his home. And he has guests from their home on this most recent episode. The, it's, it is just like, you know, the random lineups that you get on a late night talk show. So he has <laughs> Lil Rel Howery, Chris Daughtry, and Rocco Despirito. <laughs> Um, but he's so likable. He's got great energy. So he's doing a show. Um, it's on his website and also on his Facebook page. Oh, cool. If what you guys are, wa if you're not watching Desus and Mero on Showtime, by the way, they are killing it from the with the at home shows. I've never they're, seen that. They're, is they're it a good very, show? they're very very funny. Yeah. What else is? I mean, no, clearly the best at home show is Breakfast All Day. It's ours, well, of course. Uh, but if yeah. you're gonna, but when you're done watching us, we're setting the standard. <laughs> Indeed, um, Rick Springfield does an online happy hour. So if you if you're done with Richard Marx's online stuff, you can go to Rick Springfield. <laughs> what if I want to drink um, with Jesse's girl? <laughs> there's he he redid Jesse's girl with some 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 relevant lyrics. Mm. Um, Dennis D. Young from Sticks. Um, did a, a performance of the best of times. He's got online. too much time on his hands. He does <laughs> too much. Um, too but, arigato, man. <laughs> yeah. So, but he does the best of times. Which sadly, like when you listen to the lyrics now, people lock their doors and hide inside. Rumor has it it's the end of paradise. Oh. The lyrics are weirdly relevant. Um, but here's a good thing, a happy thing that I will end on. A couple things. Um, Tom Hardy. It's going to read bedtime stories to you. <laughs> yeah, so the BBC has this kids channel called Sabibis, and they have all these celebrities who over the years have read bedtime stories, truly random. But some of the recent ones include like Rick Astley and Dina Menzel and Rob Delaney. But Tom Hardy is back by popular can he do demand. It? Can he do it like he was talking in Peaky Blinders and Lawless where it's like... <laughs> I was going to say, he does not have his Bane mask right. on, so you can actually or understand as, what he's as saying. E, as either one of the craze. Right. You know? I do not run him. Yeah, he, 
He's not a Cray. He's not his character in Dunkirk, where his mouth is also covered up. Why do they do that to him? Have you guys watched the trailer for uh, Capone this week? Oh, no. Yeah. No, no not yet. No, out. but that, that's coming doesn't, out. Doesn't look great. Uh, well, uh, uh, anyway, you know, so that, by the way, speaking of, speak, speaking of Tom Hardy, uh, A24, did you guys see this? They did some sort of bracket. I don't know who voted on it, but they basically did a bunch of their titles and picked what the best one was. And they went up with Climax, which like, okay, fine, whatever. But <laughs> in the first in the first round, Locke got knocked out. I'm like, fuck this bracket. No, 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 no. That's very funny. But but the A24 bingo, if you guys follow A24 on Instagram or Twitter, they have a really, really funny bingo, which is just like dead on about all the things that you love about A24 <laughs> films. Like somebody's on fire, somebody's <laughs> ahead. <laughs> so yeah, so there's um, a lot of depressing news, but then there's some, some good news there too for things that are happening out in the world for you to enjoy. And uh, I'm excited to talk about Mrs. America with you guys on our Patreon mm. So that's a thing you can definitely binge on if you're stuck at home. That's on Hulu. I want to give a quick shout out. We are, of course, you know, there have been a lot of celebrities that we've been losing in all this. But uh, I wanted to definitely mention uh, Mort Drucker, the legendary oh, Mad yeah. Magazine cartoonist okay. who just died at the age of 91. Like one of the great sort of, I think one of the great artists of the 20th century. Like I, there are certain movie stars that when I think of what they look like, I think of how Mort Drucker drew them. Like his, he had a... He had a way of drawing people to make them look more like themselves than themselves. I think he is up there with Hirschfeld in a different style, mm. but I think that he is as influential in his own way. Um, totally. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Drew Friedman, who, who does a lot of that kind of stuff, talks about how important like Drucker's style was. So anyway, uh, if you don't know who we're talking about, if you're, if you're young, if you didn't, read Mad Magazine in the 1970s, like some of us, uh, Google him, take a look at like, you know, his Towering Inferno or whatever stuff that he did for the, for, for Mad, you'll be impressed. I think. So I want to say hi to a, um, a long time old What the Flick viewer of ours, a fellow school dad named Bailey Yang. I posted a thing on the wow. on Nick School's Facebook page and he commented on it. He's like, this is totally off topic, but I really miss your What the Flick videos. Oh. Isn't that random? And I'm like, we still exist. We're breakfast all day. So as we're finding so frequently, people are still discovering us. So hi, Bailey, yes. and tell your friends. If, if you liked us back at What the Flick, this is where we are. Please. So thanks we for watching, everybody. Oh, sorry. We also want to talk about having lost uh, the great, great, great Brian Dennehy this week. Oh, Brian yes. Dennehy. Yes, yes, I yes, yes, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes, that was yesterday. Sorry. Yeah, yeah uh, which Christy and I have both seen a film that he did that was directed by Andrew Ahn called Driveways. It, it, sort of, it, it premiered at Berlin in 2019, and it will hopefully make its way to you either theatrically or streaming in, within the next few months. An extraordinary performance. I saw it last year at the Virginia Film Festival and uh, immediately thought, like, there better be an awards campaign for this because he's so good in this movie. It's really lovely. It's the kind of role where it could have been mockish. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's a nice old guy. Old man. And he, yeah. he learns things and he becomes a better person, but it, there's so much more texture to it than that. So, of course, I mean, he's he elevates every film he's in. There's just a million mm. we could, you know, mention. Cocoon. Yeah. I, I, or I, I wish I could have seen him. Yeah, I wish I could have seen him on stage. Apparently his Willie Loman and his... Uh, 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 Tyrone, whatever the guy from uh, Long Days During the Night were both just exceptional. So, but yeah, great, great actor. Do the spiel. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, follow us at BeFest all day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And do check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash BeFest all day. We're talking about Westworld. We're talking about the plot against America. And now we're talking about this is America. So we'll be recapping the first three episodes, which you've already dropped, and uh, keeping up with the show week to week as it continues. So thanks for watching. Stay well. Take care of yourself and each other. Bye.